Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. I'm gonna be doing an install guide for the new launcher. Let's go ahead and dive in. So whether you're installing for Dying Light 2 or Dying Light 1, it's all gonna be a central launcher now. I am still working on updates for Dead Island, so those games are not fully supported, and I don't have any mods out for Bad Blood just yet. Um, but those are coming here shortly. So once you've downloaded from the Nexus, go ahead and take your uh, zip file, wherever you wanna install this, kind of the, the idea here is, is that you can delete this folder at any point to get the new versions until I have the auto updater for the actual launcher uh, introduced, which will actually update these files. But for now, you will have to delete this folder and install the new version of the launcher by simply extracting the files. All the data is actually being installed in a separate folder. Uh, so a lot of this is being done in your actual Dying Light 2, Dying Light 1 folders. Um, and so you don't have to worry about saving that data. Um, so once you have that extracted, wherever that may be, you can go ahead and open that folder and you're gonna run the imlegionlauncher.exe. Once this starts up, I've set it up to where basically it's going to start with a clean slate and we have to go ahead and set up our games to kind of begin. Um, so the first step here is to actually go over to our settings. And here you can see that I've got all seven games set up to where we can start to add all seven games to the launcher. You do not have to have all seven games. You, uh, you only have to have one of them to get started. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna do Dying Light 2. Uh, I'm already pointing to my Dying Light 2 folder, but if you're new to this, let me show you how to get here easier. If you use something like Steam to uh, play Dying Light 2, you can always go to your game, right click, hit manage, and say browse local files. I'm pretty sure it's very similar to that with Epic Games, but that will give you the actual location of the root folder for Dying Light 2. Then we can go back over to the application. In this case, it's the same, but I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in, and then we just hit select folder. When you do that, you'll notice the background changes. You'll notice a couple of pop-ups here. Basically, it's checking for specific files for the actual game's data to confirm that you actually have Dying Light 2. Um, and once that's set up, it's gonna go ahead and start pulling in all of the needed data to be able to successfully run the game. So I've got several new features here in this new version, including most of the features that were in the original Python launcher, but they've been redone uh, to be much more improved in Unity. Uh, and so I really hope you guys enjoy this new launcher. It's meant to bring the community together and allow you guys to play your favorite games and share uh, multiplayer uh, sessions to where you guys can easily join each other uh, and play multiplayer and then also share uh, different configs and share different mods here in the near future. This is the main platform that I'm working on for the unofficial dev tools. If you've been following my progress, this will be the central platform that I'll be using in the future to launch those updates. Um, so you'll be using something very similar for the unofficial dev tools. And so this is a trial run and the more feedback you give from the community, the better. Um, so if you haven't joined the Discord community, make sure to head over to the Discord. I do have a new section for the community launcher. All feedback is appreciated. If you have a bug, if you run into something, you wanna give general feedback, it's greatly appreciated because the more round out that we get the application now, the better it'll be easier, the easier it'll be for other users in the future. So let me know if anything is confusing, doesn't make sense, or things that you guys would like to see here in the coming features. I will have a roadmap coming out soon. Lots of things to do. I'm already on version E after releasing yesterday. And so lots of feedback coming in and slowly edging out some of those, uh, those edge cases. So let's go ahead and jump into actually getting this fully set up. So next step is we're gonna log in Discord you don't have to do this, but I highly recommend it, especially if you wanna play multiplayer in an easier way to share with the community and find other members who share the same mods uh, and wanna jump into a session. So if we click this login with Discord button, it's gonna open this up and it's gonna say, um, it's gonna say authorize. So let's go ahead and hit authorize here. Once that's authorized, you can actually go back to this and you can see here that everything is now set up 
uh, with your information from Discord. And so from here, you can actually head over to the installer. So the next step here is actually installing the mod. So I have gone through and created a new interface that I hope you guys enjoy as much as I've been enjoying creating it. Basically, this new interface is meant to allow you to very quickly hot swap and find the features that you want. I will be having, I will have YouTube videos that will be coming out shortly for all of the different difficulties, all of the different features that are wrapped into this, and those will appear in the top left corner as they start to get added to this content. Uh, but for now, they're in the works. Uh, so for this first part, as you want to go through, if you want to select the different modules, you want to select the different uh, events. Uh, I have pulled down the latest event um, and so or the older event, rather, the Halloween event that has been pulled back down. Um, I'm getting ready to release several new events and several new things coming up shortly. Uh, but for now, there will not be an event. Um, you can select the pathways as before. So if you want to select a pathway, the languages are about to get an overhaul as well so that you can enjoy this app uh, or this mod with more language support, but then also the application as well will be more supported here in the near future with more languages. So if you have a specific language you'd like to select, you can select it here. I do not currently have a reshade launched for this game, but I do plan on having reshades that you can also set up here and potentially select from different presets if you want different information uh, for your reshade. So once you go down to the summary, you can see here that we picked Survivor. We picked a couple of different modules. Say you're having second thoughts about one of these, you can always just click it off and it'll remove it from your selection. And when you're ready to install, you can go ahead and hit the install button. That's gonna gather the files and to show you what that's doing on the back end, basically what we're doing is, is that all of this data is now immediately being created inside of your actual files. So all you have to do is, uh, is head over and kind of watch. Uh, what it's gonna do is it should clear out the data two and the data three as before I am Legion will always take up the data two and then the data three is any of the uh, modules, events, languages, pathways, anything else that you have uh, to install. So um, in the near future, there will also be more for mod support. So installing any other mods that are on the Nexus, and those will also be able to be installed into a data four. And I'm actually setting all of that up to where it can be immediately combined. It can be auto updated. There's a ton of features coming down the road for mod support for all the other mods that are available on the Nexus and supporting those with I am Legion. Um, so once you see here that it's all set up, we now have this uh, data two and data three. Everything should check out. It is now installed into our game. So at any point we can check the update button to make sure that everything is updated. Also keep an eye on the news, which is getting ready to be updated to the latest version. And make sure to uh, use this when you're uh, launching the game, just because this will allow you to very quickly see Am I up to date? Have I done all the necessary things? For example, probably the biggest part of this, and it should do it when I try to launch, is that we have not set up any game, save game backups. So one of the most critical things for a lot of new members is, is that they come to the mod without reading the mod manual, and they don't realize that there are so many different things with this game specifically that makes their save games very vulnerable when using mods such as events like the winter event that was just launched. So one of the first things we're gonna wanna do is go back to our save game tool here and go ahead and set a path. So to find these files, uh, you basically need to go to where you have set up Steam. So we're gonna go to, in this case, program files, And actually, it's going to be 86 Steam. It's going to be Steam user or user data. This is going to be your username. And then once you go in here, it is going to be, <laughs> you kind of have to member, memorize the different ones here, but this one is going to be 534380. So you can find that all in the mod documentation. I do have a section for finding your save games. It's very clearly outlined how to find this file, but you're seeing it here again. Uh, next, you'll go into remote, then out, 
and then save. So this is the correct folder. Once you are here, you'll hit select folder. And what that's gonna do is load in any of the saves that you have. So in your case, you're not gonna have any of these saves already set up. But at this point, you can now set up any save games that you want. So if we wanna go in here and say winter event, and say you wanna play the winter event, but you're not sure what mods work, what mods don't, you can go ahead and make a save game backup and this will back up your files to where you don't have to worry about whether or not these are safe or not. Um, from this point, you can very easily swap these files. So the idea here is I was trying to make it easy for you to basically restore these files um, and hot swap them out. So same as our sessions over in multiplayer, basically at any point you can hit the restore button and it will switch your save games between these different ones. And so feel free to just use that to switch between your different data sets. If you wanna try different things, you can now feel free to try whatever you would like with any different mods, without with any of the modules, without having to worry that your save games are actually gonna corrupt. Please make sure to back up your save games. At that point, you can now launch the game. So you can hit play here and it should go ahead and launch Dying Light 2 because it is up to date on this side. The only thing that's not up to date is the actual news. Um, and so you can use this to launch into Dying Light 2 at any point. I'll go ahead and hit Alt F4 to get out of there and show you the last feature. So the last feature is going to be multiplayer. So for a multiplayer session, you can host a public multiplayer session to allow other people to very quickly join you. Um, it was a little bit difficult before. There were a lot of steps previously. I've tried to streamline this and make this super easy. Basically, all we need to do here is that if you wanna host privately without going into Discord, that's fine. That's also supported. All you need to do is hit host. And when you do that, it's gonna create this summary folder for you. Basically, it's just gonna create these files, it's gonna create a little host summary, and all you have to do is send this to your buddy. Um, so whoever you plan on playing with, you can just go ahead and send them these files, and it's gonna contain everything that's needed to go ahead and get into the game. So it's wrapping all of that data up nice in a bow for you so that you don't have to worry about it. It's also creating backups for your files that were already installed. So say for example, you wanna play with a friend and he has a very specific mod set that is not what you would normally play with. For example, if you guys wanna test out Insanity together. Well, what you could do here is go and actually, when you host out these sessions, make a save game back up first, go ahead and host out a session, and I'll, let me show you how you can actually set these up to where you can hot swap between their session and your session. So we now have these files. If you wanna send these files over to your friend, you can, and I'll also show you just really quickly. You can also publicly host this if you've set up the Discord channel. So we're gonna go ahead and hit host, we, it is gonna make you confirm, yes, you are aware that you're sharing the data. There's absolutely not a security risk by doing so. It's just letting you know you are consciously aware of the fact that you are getting ready to share your data online. So if you go to the Discord channel, you'll see here for Dying Light 2, so it's gonna be in the Dying Light 2 section, we now have a new session that is called Doc on Holiday is hosting a session. And it should nicely summarize all the things that we've selected in this video. Don't worry about this too much for now. I'm doing this for testing reasons to support mod support here in the future. Um, it does currently support that. So if you have other mods installed, it will share those out as well. Just be aware that I have a lot more tools coming and it'll make it a lot easier in the near future. So you can see here that we now have this zip file here at the bottom. The same thing is what we shared out with the private session. You can download these files. And when you download these files, basically what you're gonna do is, is we're gonna set these up in our co-op folder. So when you download those files, head over to the I Am Legion co-op folder. This should be created in all of your uh, games as you add them to the application. So if you add a different uh, one, like for example, you add Dying Light uh, to the actual launcher, it will add some of these folders and you can then use them the same way across all the different games. Uh, so in this case, we wanna host a session and, and play co-op with a buddy. We already have a session file that it created for us earlier. So in this case, this is our session file that it just created. So I'm the host, 
it's already uh, created that file, so we don't actually need to create a file here. All I have to do is go back and hit refresh, and you can see here are all my examples of the different session files that we have available. What I've tried to do is summarize and make this super straightforward so that you can see are you compatible immediately with that session? So it shows you who the host is, it shows you their faction, that will be more important later, uh, and it also allow you to either delete or install the files. So say for example, we're like, okay, I wanna play this version, I'm not currently compatible because I don't have these installed, but I do wanna play this session, so let me show you what it'll do on the back end here. So if we head over to source, I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's install this session here. So it just hot swapped our data out and so it should have actually set those files back. Let me hit restore really quick and make sure that these are getting swapped. There we go. It looked like that first time, it looked like it kind of struggled. Um, I still have to maybe refine a couple of things here, but then when we hit refresh, you can see that it is gonna say that too many file discrepancies. So we're gonna say restore, and that's gonna restore us back to the original files. Let's restore back to this one actually. And you can see it's adding those files over here. Um, it may be actually where these are older session files that I've set up um, over previous versions. Um, and so potentially I've got some files on this one that are not actually playing nice anymore. Uh, and so, and you can see here, the data types are a little bit different for each one. So please bear with me, I'm still working on this, but basically the idea is, is that this was our latest version, this should work. All these other ones are the older files. Basically, we can just delete these sessions out of here. Um, but the idea here is, is that if you want to swap between your older data, then you can easily do so um, by using this folder and actually then using these backups. So there, there will also be backups in here. And I can see that it didn't actually create my offline backup file that I was uh, looking for it to create. So it does look like it still needs some refinement. I apologize that that happened on the video. It's always when you're trying to show what you've created that there's always a little something. But moving super fast on this end, trying to support as many features as possible. With this new update, I wanted to get this out to you guys so you could try it out get that feedback over to me i apologize that the video went a little bit longer lastly the last thing i'll show for uh, show to you is that the mod section it is still very early stage but basically you can browse all of the different mods that are available on the nexus uh, you can search them you can sort them uh, we can say something like guns and see the different files that are available. And you can then actually go ahead and launch those uh, immediately to the Nexus and get there. Um, what this is doing is basically when you have these downloaded, so as you download these different files, if it shows up here, then when you add it to the mods folder inside your game, it's actually gonna work to try to convert that data over to the latest version of the game. This is still all very early testing, so I, I don't recommend trying to do this at this time. Um, I'm just showing that this is getting a massive overhaul next where I'm gonna try to work to not only allow you to install and share the different mods that people have created to create co-op sessions, but then also the auto update and conversion code that I've been working on for the auto heal for the unofficial dev tools will be coming right behind it to help support more of those things in the future to avoid having to grind out these updates every time. So big shout out, thanks again to Techland for continuing to put out these updates. I do appreciate that they're continuing to work on the game. It has been a grind. Uh, over to the last thing, big shout out to all my supporters. Thank you guys so much for all that you've done uh, to continue to support the project. It's been crazy, it's still ongoing. Uh, thank you guys so much for being a part of the Discord community. That's been a big encouragement to continue to work on the mod as well. Thank you guys so much. And a big shout out to Lucas, who is responsible for the wonderful audio track that will play in the background while you use the launcher. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I look forward to talking to each of you in the community. Stay tuned and happy gaming.